Okay, the next one for us to fix here is this Hermley movement. And this one is actually not marked Hermley. It's not marked Hamilton, but it was made by Hermley. And it's got the letter E here. If we look up the code for the dating code, E stands for 1992. Okay, this was made in 1992. And the model number is a 351-030. And the A afterwards, probably an engineering code, and it's 43 centimeter pendulum, so it's a wall clock. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this thing. Okay, we wound it up, and it's saying that it uh, seems to be working. It does run. Chiming. And striking now. So, well, maybe it just needs cleaned and oiled. We'll see as we get it apart. Okay, the first thing we want to do is uh, let down the springs. And this is a, well, it's a number 10 key. Okay, and we'll just, this is a uh, let down key. Pull the click back and let this slip through our hands and let the spring all the way down. That's the chime side. Now we'll do the run side. And we'll let that slip through. And that's all the way down. Three springs are down safely. And our next thing, I think I'll take the suspension spring off the back. And we'll do that by taking this screw out. Suspension spring then will come loose. And there is a notch here that will allow us to turn that and remove it. Now that's safe. We'll take the springs out now. And the way to do that is to remove the clicks. Ooh, that's really tight. I'm going to have to have a heftier screwdriver in there. Let's see if this one does it. Oh. Okay. Okay, we take that to cover off the And these all wind to the right, so it doesn't matter which ones we use. Put those in there. And then we'll take this one out.
touch it. Well, okay. I forgot this one. Oh. And then we can take a, I wanna set some pans up here now for three sides, three things. I wanna put the, uh, we'll put this spring in there. Once those clicks are up, we can just pull this center wheel, or center arbor out, like so. And then the spring comes out. For those of you who can see that this has a number on it, number 56. Okay, so if you need to replace a spring and the barrel, it's the number 56. And we can just, we'll be dealing with those in a little bit because we're going to take the springs out of here and we will be uh, processing those uh, and cleaning them. Okay, got the run side. There's the spring on that one, and you see on this one, it's the number 52. Okay, and then we've got the chime side, and that spring is, it's a much bigger barrel, and that's uh, number 54. 52, 54, 56. Now before I take anything else out, I'm going to just take a look and see if I find any bad bushings by moving, uh, moving the gears. Okay. Introduce another friend here. This is Molly, the latest addition to our family. Well, it's coming home from a restaurant in December. It's been like three months ago. And uh, I saw this thing sitting in the middle of the highway. And I stopped and here was this tiny little kitten that was almost frozen to death. Its eyes were matted shut. Its nose was matted shut with mucus. And uh, it could hardly move because it was only about frozen. So I scooped her up, stuck her inside my coat, took her to a vet. She weighed a little more, just a little more than a pound. And thought maybe she was between five, six weeks old. And uh, so we've had her. Now we uh, treated her with antibiotic and treated her with eye drops and got her cleaned up. She ate like a horse. Now she is well over six pounds and this is uh, beginning of April and uh, we've named her Molly and she's become a real good friends with our puppy. And, uh, so I'm glad I saved her. She was uh, she would have gotten run over or died from exposure. So she keeps me company now along with wrestling and chasing with the dog. And, uh, anyway, she's, uh, she's a good clock watcher. So this is Molly, so you might see her in videos from now on too. And, uh, good little girl. She likes to purr. Nice Molly. She's a torty. All right. Things like the clicks on here can't come off because they're <coughs> they're uh, riveted in. But we can start taking this other stuff off. 
I really only found the uh, second wheel on the back to have any kind of movement in it at all. That's about, there you can see it, so I've just kind of circled that area, and it's not all that much, so we'll probably do that one. I'll check the rest of these again later. <coughs> so anyway, we've got to have some very small screwdrivers here. Gotta take uh, these are little set screws. We'll take this cam off that's that's here. I guess better put some magnifiers on because I can't see. Okay, there we go. A little set screw here. That needs smaller than that. Let's try this one here. <clears throat> there we go. Mm. Oh boy, that's really tight. That rub is so tight. I don't know if I can get that with this. Well, that is a really tight screw. I'm going to try it this way first. Well, I think I got it loosened. Yep, that got it loosened. Okay. Two up? Uh, yeah, there's two of those. One on either side. Yeah, so see how tight. Oh my goodness, that's tight. Oh, we'll just hold it in place. Okay, I think I heard it. Yep, got it loose. Okay, now well, that'll come off. Or should. Sit for a few minutes and see if that gets out. Yeah, that's got it. Yeah, we'll put those over with the. Uh, so this is chime. I'll put that over with the chime, and we'll let's take some of the rest of this off then too. We've got uh, an E clip here to take this off. Move that, move that e clip around here. Where 
before I can get to the front of it. And then we'll push it off. Put that in there. And we've got a washer that comes off. And it's just like doing a cuckoo clock and stuff. And we take off the snail. And then we've got a clip a little tiny clip here with the rack I mean that's that's pretty tiny little e clip take the rack off put that in there now here's a, this is again this is over on the strike side so we'll put that in there and that's got a little tiny e-clip on it as well. Okay. There's... Oop! <laughs> dropped it. Yeah. If that went on the floor, I may not be able to find it. It's a good thing I got a supply of them. And there it is, right here. And, uh, oh, it didn't go on the floor, thank goodness. That's uh, a pretty tight one to get up. Okay, and we've got a spring on here. gathering pallet here that's going to have to come off. We've got this one that's kind of a gathering pallet. Uh, not really a gathering pallet, but it's a cam with a stop that's a stop pallet. And it's got some set screws. It's got some set screws in there too, so I've got to get those out. And we'll take it off. Okay, put a little bit of WD-40 on that. Okay, let's see if we can get this one off. With two of these. No, oh, we're going to let it soak for a while. This one stays in because that's part of uh, that's part of the uh, it's permanently attached to that particular shaft and arbor. We can take this one out. There's a little spring on that. Okay, where's my forceps? Okay, we'll take this out. C-clip on there, or an E-clip to take off of that one. No, that's really a tiny one. Okay. Okay. That's what you call a tiny E-clip. Okay, we should be able to get this out of the way. Maybe unless there's another e clip on the other side. No. Okay, that's coming. Oh. Well, that's part of the problem here is these things are really dry. And they're not wanting to come off. Alright, now we can get this off, which is the stop for the chime. So we can... oh, that's too thick. 
thin. Try this one. Oh, that's a really thin slot on that one. We can do it this way. A little more leverage on that screw. Okay, I think it got started. Yeah, there we go. Man, those suckers are tight. Oh, I'm not gonna turn that one. Part of the problem is. 81, you start losing some of your strength too, so get that down in the slot. Okay, that's got it. slide out. Those are countersunk. So we're going to have to take, uh, let's see, uh, those are okay. I guess we're going to have to take that plate off. We're going to have to take that, take this off and take that C-clip off. Okay, and then we should get that off. Let me take this. You see, probably this one will fit. Huh? Oh, that feels awfully loose. Guys, there we go. Okay. Let that loose once we get this loose. Should be able 
able to. Hmm. There we go. Okay. And then, oh, okay, now we gotta cut those done. And then we're going to have a gear here to come off. And this gear to come off. This is uh, held on with a set screw. <clears throat> is the linkage that allows the strike side to lift a couple of hammers to strike the hour. So take that off. We got another e-clip here. Boy, these are tiny little ones. deadbeat escapement. Take these two off. Man. We're going to get long screws in there for that one. this off. A lot of oil in there. Okay, and we can pull that out. Take that out this way. Well, let's see how much wear we got on the, on the pallets. Whoa, just a, a lot of gunky dirt. Got that off. Okay, 
Let's strike. That's over there. All right, we have everything off. This is going to cause a problem coming out. We have a, a fifth pillar in the middle. So we want to uh, see it down in there. I would like to leave these so I can get a picture of the... I think we'll go ahead and take the take the back off. Let me get up. Right. Okay, these are so tight. These pillars. So, get this loose. I'm going to have to hold the center post still. off. Mm. Like stuff is glued. Very tight stuff. I 
Let's set these back in place. Here's our gear arrangement. Okay, and now we're going to take these out and put them. And okay, we've got the center, and that one's not going to come out without using a puller. So the second wheel is here. Let's just take out what we've got. This is a strike. Okay. All the parts are in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll leave them in there for about half an hour. <coughs> Here are all the gears and levers. Plates, they've been all cleaned. The only thing that hasn't been cleaned now is the is the springs and the uh, and the uh, barrels. So we'll have to do those. But I'm going to polish these. I'm going to take all of these and polish the uh, polish the pivots on them. Okay, looking at the, got all the clean gears back in. This is the second wheel on the run train. And that's definitely worn. You can see where that needs that needs to be repushed. Looking at uh, many of the rest of these, they just uh, they look fine. And that's on the back, and uh, it's about the same on the front. So we're going to have two bushings put in. That's the second wheel, and this is the. Uh, same thing, second wheel on the front side too. That's uh, that's pretty worn. So we'll we'll be replacing that one as well. Okay, Got to measure the pivot. back and that's just almost exactly uh, let's see it's two exactly two millimeters okay so both front and back pivots on this gear are Two millimeters internal, or two millimeters, so I need a bushing of about two millimeters. Okay, so here's uh, bushings that have a bore of two millimeters, and the diameter, outside diameter, is four and a half millimeters. So we're going to have to uh, broach out the hole, or ream out the hole, to four and a half millimeters. Before I do any <coughs> reaming, I need to take this fine round file and I need to put it in here and I need to file the unworn side the same as the worn side, so that our stuff will center. Okay, and now we're ready to ream it out. All right. Now this is not a four and a half millimeter brooch or uh, reamer. It's a 4.47 millimeter. It's just three hundredths of a millimeter smaller than the bushing. It doesn't matter which side we broke ream from because the sides 
the sides of the reamer when we get down to the finish are parallel. take a chamfering tool because there's a little bit of a sharp edge on there and we will just take the sharp edges off both sides of the hole and then with the front plate just remove that. It's okay Molly. that and then uh, we're going to put here's the bushing and here's another bushing We've got both of them and we just want to make sure <coughs> that we have this uh, so that uh, the oil sink is to the outside We definitely want, they should be pretty close, yeah, they're inch or one and a half millimeters. I'm just going to pound them in here. There's the bushing right there, and it's flat to the inside. Then we'll have to broach to make sure that, because when you pound that in, it compresses. You're pounding it into a hole that's smaller than this diameter. And it compresses and it closes that hole a little bit. So what ends up happening is that uh, uh, the hole being closed, now this doesn't fit anymore. So then that has to be just lightly broached out. And we'll do the same with the other. All right, now what we do is we pick a, pick a cutting broach that's going to fit in the hole. And like that, before it starts cutting, so now I know that this is close so I don't want to, I'm going to start from the inside put the cutting broach in turn it a couple of times keeping it straight and we we'll check see if this, yep, see that one in now the problem is it's a little stiff because this cutting broach is tapered so to make that hole as close to cylindrical as we can, we put the cutting broach in the other side and turn it once or twice. Evens things out. Put the thing in. We've got a nice, smooth operating. Okay. And now we're going to do the same to the other side. Only that's with this end and we're going to go from the inside and we're going to broach just a little bit straight in and we should be close very close a little bit more okay that's I'm going to go from the other side and we can even it out. Let's see what we got. 
fits in there very nicely. Very nicely. Now the last test will be to put the plates together and see if we have a nice uh, smooth motion. It'll take just a second. I'll put the plate on. Gotta also center the Pivot back in the hole. Maybe. There we go. And they fit there. Oh, that's tight. That's a little tight. So we need to take that out. And we're going to find out which side is tight. And I think it's right, it's this side here. It's a little bit on the tight side, so we're gonna go back in. Just a little bit more. Back, back. Okay, that was a little tight. I'm going to test again. Still tiny, tiny bit tight. Let's see which side is tight, not the back side. The back side seems to spin freely. Front side, maybe need, yeah, that's just a tad tight. Back in and we will cut just a little bit more. Fit. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. Okay, let's see how it goes now. In. And now we have a nice freely moving wheel. And shake very nice. You can hear it freely moving. And we're done with that bushing. One last step to really finish these bushings now is to take a smooth brooch. These are not faceted, these are round, and what they really do is kind of burnish the hole and uh, Make it very smooth and also uh, something to say work hardens it a little bit. So I need to. Uh, where's my oil? Okay. I need to take just a tad of oil. Just get a brush. Put a little bit of oil on this. Hunt, but just enough to okay. Put a little bit of oil on it. Yeah, it's best to use the oil that you're going to use when you're doing this thing. Yeah, put the oil in. Uh, maybe. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay. And the way we do this is we put that into the the uh, bushing and we rotate this and actually kind of circular motion while you're twisting it. Give it a little polish. Go to the other side. This again because this is tapered we want to go to both sides. Spin it. Okay. And we've got now work hardened and burnished. 
and do the same with the other side. There's the gear arrangement. Here's back in and put the plate on. We put the uh, springs in afterwards. They still have to be cleaned and oiled. Okay. Got the gears in. And all we have to do is put the stuff on the front and then install the uh, Install the hammers, install the uh, springs, and it'll be back together. We'll have to clean the springs first, though. Okay, before we start putting all this stuff back on the front, we will uh, oil everything. <coughs> spring so the first thing we got to do is get the cover off of the machine and see if we can't get this down. We'll put this in here. And then we're gonna wind this, maybe. We'll wind it that and see it's gonna wind that way. Okay, we're gonna stick it in the machine, we're gonna wind it up tight enough that then we can slip this over the spring. I don't know if I got that one or this one. Let's see. Uh, might be a little too big. Uh, let's try this one because we need to be able to put this slot in here. And grab that spring. I don't know if that'd be too tight. We'll wind it up and see what we get. Okay, we got it in the machine. Now what we gotta do is we gotta hang on to this dang thing with the left hand. Oop, forgot. We gotta put the put the ring in. So we gotta undo this again. Oh and capture ring in. Here. 
here. Let me slide this on here. Let me tighten her down. Now we use a glove. We get the hang on to the gears. Let me see if I can reposition this so you can see something. Okay, I'm going to hang on to this. And then I'm going, let's see which way it's got to wind here. Okay, you got to wind this way. Ring up. We take this ring, place it in there tight, and then we <clears throat> come on. Come on, little guy. I always have trouble flipping that over. Okay, and we we'll let it down. We've captured the spring. And there it is. Hand strength ain't what it used to be. Okay, now there's the spring captured in here. This is now free. They're all gunky, sticky, gooey nastiness in there. Now we're going to unwind this and put this hook through the loop. And now we're going to put this back on. And put this in here. And that's good and tight. Okay, let me tighten this down. Okay, well, now we'll wind this up. Wind this up until we can slip this off and then we will now flip that the other way and we'll let that come down we'll to try to let it come down okay all the way down there we go and now this has got oh that is so gummy and so dry under it wasn't working. Right. We take that off and we will now clean this, oil it. I'm wondering. I'm pretty tired, but we'll clean this and we'll oil it and we'll put it back in. We'll clean the case, the barrel, top everything and then we'll get it back in okay oh no more grease and nice and clean now we'll lube it and then roll it back up and get it back in the barrel okay we're gonna go ahead and lubricate this and I'm going to use a Synthetic PTFE in it. Spray it into the inner coils. Get a little bit out here. And then we will take a brush and we will go round and round and round. All the way around and around. on every part inside and out. And make sure we have and we put this back together and wind it up. Spread it out. Good show. Now we gotta wind it back up, get it back into let's see which one, this one I guess. No, this one. Oh I got it on the winder already. 
We need to wind this so that this will slip over where the spring attaches. Anyway, we're going to wind it up, slip this over it, and let it down inside here. Then put this on, put this inside, wind it back up again, take this off, let it back down and we'll have it back in the barrel. Ah, I hate this. Right, when we get this wound up, we're going to put this hole where it attaches. back on we'll put this in here and then we can go from there put this back in bring this over tighten and now we gotta crank it up we're gonna hold the glove again some grief here. Make sure that spring's all the way in. Oh, there's a problem. Okay, spring's not all the way Spring's in. sticking up here, so I just want to knock it down in there. Is the clock shop open? Yes, it is. Are business? Huh? For business? <laughs> is what? For business? Oh, yeah. How you doing? Yeah, doing all right. Done? Yeah, I'm trying. Well, this one spring cap, there we go, finally. Couldn't get that spring cap back on, but got it now. That's all right. Now we got one more to do. Same size spring as the other one. We gotta do the same thing, we just gotta... If I whack this, see, some people say use the little hole that's in the cover. To pry it out with a screwdriver. Well, these don't even have a hole. So how do you get that cover out of there? If you hit this, the rim that's on the inside here will push against the edge of that hole and pop it out. Sometimes you got to whack it pretty good and hard. And keep from hurting my hand. I put a thing on here, and I'm just going to whack it on the desk like so, and that pops that off. Okay. Now we're going to do the same process. Uh, 
we want to get this spring into this retainer. And then once it's in the retainer, we wind it up tight and we take the retainer off and let the spring down. So the retainer is going to go in here where the hook on the barrel is. And you got to find a retainer that's the right size. If you get it too big, this one is kind of iffy. Anyway, I'd rather tighten them up. Makes it easier to get in and out. And uh, we'll go ahead and stick this in the uh, winder now and uh, get it all wound down. Maybe we're going to take the barrel off. There we go. Got it loosened. Barrel's off. Spring is here. This is sticking out. And now we're going to have to, this go winds to the right. And we're going to want to put that hook in there. All right. That's in. That's in. I think. Crank it up tight. Now we're going to crank it. Put the glove back on. We're going to tighten this up until it's loose enough to let out this hook is supposed to hold. Okay, here we go. devil to get that in so that I could get that over the hook. Alright, now it's ready to put back in the winder. Wind this up to take this out and then we'll have it back in place. Okay. And now we can put this on. Key. I can put this in. Down and now it's time to put 
the cover back on. Okay. And the way we do that again is get this ready. And we just gotta hammer that down. The way we hammer it down is something there. I can also take this next door and put it in a press and squeeze it together, but this should work. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Yep, not going. Give it a try again. Spring is ready to go back in the clock. Okay, you got to put uh, springs back in, and uh, this is the run side. That just they just slide like this. And this goes in like so. Then we take a uh, the ratchet, and then we put a retainer, and we're going to put a screw in the retainer. side. It's number 52. And that goes in here. Put the stem back in. And rotate it until you feel where it goes in. And we get one of these. on it. Click. Retainer. And screw. Drop the screw. Okay, found the screw. I'm going to show you a neat thing to have is one of these. It's a little flashlight. Also, this rim is magnetic and the other end is magnetic. And so you just, and it's got extension on it, you stretch out like so. Reach down on the floor and go back and forth on the carpet. You find the screw that way. And anyway, take care of that. And now we will put that screw in. Hmm. Okay, anyway, the last one, the gear goes upside down the other way. And this goes through here. You gotta find the spot. There it goes. And that is in. Click. Now, retainer. Now, this screw goes in 
here. Okay. Alright, we got it back together. Okay, we got some minor issues here. We'll have to do some things here. I wound it just a little bit and definitely running. Okay. Okay, been running overnight. Now it's time to make sure that the chimes and strike are set up properly. In another video, I explained how to set this all up. Uh, this is the chime mechanism. Is the quarter hour half hour, three quarter hour, and then the hour. And on the hour lobe, notice that there is a bigger bump. Let me see if I can put something behind that to make it a little more apparent. If I take this black rag. Is that a bigger bump? This bigger bump right here, that's going to be important. And this little hook here is called the correction hook, chime correction hook. And it can only be lifted out of the way during the hour strike. Anyway, so what you got to do to set this up is just make sure that You look and see where the hour cam is. That's the big cam on the back of behind here. The biggest cam is the hour cam. Just make sure it's just past that this is on the after the hour, just ready to strike the quarter hour, and that this is everything is being held except this little puppy and you're ready to go okay now the only other problem you have is making sure it's playing the right chimes now on a quarter hour which is going to play next what we should see is four descending notes on the hammers so let's see what happens I deliberately don't have it set right I think let me see if I can do this right now. Okay, there goes the bong, 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 bong. Okay, it's set right. All right, that's the four descending notes that occur on the quarter hour. They will also be the last four bars on the three-quarter hour. Let's take a look at that one. Here's the half hour. And here's the three-quarter hour. You can either set these for the quarter hour or three-quarter hour. Three-quarter hour. Notice the last four bars. One, no. One, one, two, three, four. Descending. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's the notes that have to be played on the quarter hour and at the end of the three-quarter hour. Somebody asked, I have, mine is working so that, so that the last note isn't played until the next quarter hour. If that's the case, what you want to do is go to the back and you want to loosen 
this set screw on this gear and then pull it forward so that it disengages that gear because that's the gear that's going to then run the drum with the pins on it and then you can freely turn this drum until you get all of the hammers released. Once you get that last note set by changing, by turning that, it might only be the need for being changed by one tooth here. Then you can push this back in, reconnect, tighten the set screw down, and then see if it strikes properly. If it doesn't, loosen it up, disconnect it, move it again, reconnect it, set the set screw, and to, until the, the uh, hammers are all released at the proper time. And that's where you make that adjustment is on the back here. And now we're going to put the rest of this together. Okay, so here we come up. This is now set here. Here. To strike the quarter hour. This is up out of the way. And it should be falling on about the Let's see, 12, 11, 10, 9, looks like about 8 o'clock. Okay, so there's the quarter hour. The hammer strike a descending blow. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Now we're going to go to the half hour. Now in a three-quarter hour, we're going to see this go down. This hook is going down so that in case it's out of strike, it locks up everything. Now, the only thing that is allowed to strike now is the hour. So let's say this our hand we're pointing at the quarter hour we're about to strike the quarter hour get to the quarter hour nothing would happen because this is locked half hour nothing would happen because this is locked three quarter hour nothing would happen because this is locked but when we get to the hour that little thing is going to be it's going to be raised high enough by the hour cam behind the minute hand to unlock things and now it can strike and then this bump on this cam right here is going to trip the strike to strike the hour okay, it's lifting drops now it can strike the hour and I'll count the hour one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops it's stuck, eight, nine, must have been nine o'clock then. Okay now we go, let me show you what happens, let me go backwards. Let's say we come up to the half hour now and it's going to strike the wrong time. It's just going to strike the quarter hour. Now on a three-quarter hour, it's only going to strike the half hour. And on the hour, it's going to strike the three-quarter hour. Now, don't go turning that hand. I mean, take it off and turn it in another direction because now it, things are locked. So at the quarter hour, nothing happens. At the half hour, nothing happens. Three quarter hour, nothing happens. On the hour, things get unlocked. 
And now it strikes or chimes the normal hour. Then it strikes the hour. And everything's going to be back set so everything works correctly. So what you do with this clock is if it gets out of strike or out of chime, leave it alone and within a couple of, within an hour or two it'll correct itself. Now how can it get out of whack? Well the easiest way to get it out of whack is let's say this chime spring runs down. You forget to wind it and the clock keeps running and it doesn't chime so when it comes to the quarter hour let's say right now it comes to the quarter hour and here's what happens nothing happens because this is wound down now you get to the half hour nothing happens because that's wound down three quarter hour nothing happens because that's wound down okay alright so now we come up to the hour you want forget now and you wind it you go ahead and wind it and now on the hour it strikes the quarter hour well you get all panicky and you think you gotta start moving the, the hand leave it alone because on the quarter hour it's going to strike the half hour on the half hour it's going to strike the three quarter hour and it's going to get locked up. There's a little cam on the back of this cam that allows that to drop down and lock things up. Okay, now the chime is locked up. So now we get to the three quarter hour and nothing happens. And we get to the hour and bingo, now it strikes the hour. And guess what? We're right back to being the way it should be and now it'll continue to chime and strike as it should. The important thing is start out by setting this by getting past the longest cam on the back of this minute shaft. That's the hour cam. Make sure it's passed. Then set this right here to the three-quarter hour. Everything's all locked up. Where everything's all set. Okay, one more and it should be done. Okay. And we get down here. Now we get the quarter hour. Okay. Everything's striking as it should be. Three quarters. So the, between the three quarter hour and the hour, everything gets corrected and then it will strike properly. People get in trouble with these because if the chime is off, they think they gotta take the hand off and turn it to the quarter hour that it should be, and that's not the thing to do. Okay, All right, it's time to put it back in the case and adjust the hands to the chime rod so don't put everything back together. Should be striking here pretty quick. There it goes. Chime. Okay. That's okay. Clean the dial. I can't do away with the scratches that are here from use, but it's all clean, so now we're going to put the dial on. And everything looks good here. So these go into those slot here, slot here, slot here, and I don't know what the heck, I guess that's a slot there too, but it's a biggie. Okay, 
so we're going to go over the top and then we're going to find goes in there come on that's the way make sure that the silent lever is in the slot on the dial put those in maybe boy tight fit oh, put those in I gotta move this camera a bunch of pins let's see if these will fit yeah these should do holes on them. I need some magnification here. That's good enough. Alrighty. That's ready now. Yeah, mistake. I'm sitting here wondering why the dad gum thing wasn't chiming. And I bet you can't guess where that was. So push it down. Everything's working fine. Okay. Case has been cleaned. There's the finish clock. <laughs> 